transfer news at them again, as per usual in this summertime preseason season at the moment, really. Let's start off with what I find an interesting one. These Saudi Arabia moves keep happening, and I want to start there. Jordan Henderson, for you Liverpool fans, I'm sure you guys are going to look back at his career in high high regards. And, I mean, I still feel like his age is a lot, but do you feel like Liverpool got the short end of the stick there with that price tag? I think it was, what, like 12 million or something? Well, the, the the Saudi Arabian team was expecting it to be free. That's that tells you what what kind of performances he's been putting in. Henderson was uh, he was ass. I'll, I'll just put it that way. I don't know how, how else to put it. And that's that's down to you know him playing a lot of games and and he's he's getting old in terms of his age. But that that's a great price for Liverpool. Twelve fifteen million pounds. I I think it's with add ons if if it gets it's achieved as fifteen million pounds. A good price. The only thing is, I mean, they're going to have a whole new midfield next season. Which is whether, kind of a good thing, no? <laughs> well, it, it can be. It can be. But whether you, you value him that much on the field or not, it, it's kind of a different matter because, I mean, he he's the, he's the captain, right? He's, uh, we all know, I mean, I don't even follow Liverpool that closely. And, and I know that he's he's the one that's setting standards in, in the dressing room. I don't think Liverpool will, will collapse. Because they've got a great core in Van Dijk, in um, in Allison, and also Salah, um, but a, a bit concerning when when a rebuild happens this fast, this quick in one window. I mean, they are replacing them with quality midfielders, but still, that impact is you know it, you can't just ignore that just because they're you know just because they can't run or, or pass the ball anymore. I mean, I don't know. Like, yes, you're right. Henderson hasn't been himself, but with what he's provided this Liverpool side, don't you think that he could have provided a bit more, like coming up into the future, maybe for at least a year or so? Or you just think it was just Liverpool's time to get rid of him and, as you say, get a whole refresh new midfield in? No, I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I feel, I, I don't think he should have been moved on. I mean. He wanted to go, you know. I mean, seven hundred thousand pounds a week. I mean, that's that. You would dream of seven hundred k per year, let alone a week. So, yeah, that is just absolutely staggering. I don't know what the hell are Saudi Arabia thinking at this point? Are they looking at Henderson as actually a player who's going to come in and provide the attributes that we know him to have, that work rate, that leadership, that just understanding of the game, or is this for shirt sales? I mean, I'll tell you what, Henderson is not going to sell millions of shirts. That's I'll what I'm saying, that. right? So it has to be, it, there has to be some answer from them. I, I mean, I told you, he, he's, he's, he's going to be Stevie G's friend, his mate, because he's lonely, you know? Obviously, I mean, he, he can't speak the language, so there, there's a language barrier. Ex-Liverpool captain combining with the, the current and soon-to-be ex-Liverpool captain. It, it, I, I, it's just, I mean, the manager wants him, and that team is not one of the teams that are sponsored by PIF, Al um, Etifak. That's why it was a hiccup, you know, trying to come up with 12 million pounds. And even they are able to afford 700,000 pounds a week on a on a very much declining player who's coming in to be the manager's buddy, really. Yeah, honestly, that's that's really what it's looking like. It's looking just like a Liverpool reunion for them, man, to be honest. But enough for Henderson, because, yo, we really want to look at somebody who at least is going to be worth their money, to some degree at least. Riyad Mahrez on the move to Saudi Arabia. Wow. To me, it's shocking. I don't know if Mahrez just say, yo, I want some more solidified game time. I mean, as you said, that pay is going to be very, very nice for him. And and but, he's um, I, I'm pretty sure he's Muslim too, right? So that 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 plays nicely. Right, closer to home, the, you know, the culture is more familiar to him. But I don't know. I'm still looking at Mares and asking the question: Could he not look on his career right now and say, 
boy, I have an opportunity to really make a name for my career and to step up and say, let me show the world who I am and what I can do. He's won a couple of league titles. We can give him the credit for that. But I don't think Maris has truly cemented himself as a real don in football if he were to retire today. Well, I mean, do you think he can anywhere in Europe at, at his at his age right now? I think he can. I think he has the skills for it, for sure. Those skills only come up when he has the gloves on in the winter times. You know, that's why he's <laughs> on the bench for, for City. He there's a reason why he's fallen off the pecking order. And to be honest, I, I don't blame him for this move. You know, and this goes for a lot of City players. They're getting up there in age. KDB is 32. Carl Walker is probably going to move to Bayern Munich. He's 32. You know, Ederson is clo uh, edging closer to 30. I mean, he's a keeper, so it's a different story. Um, Everyone, almost everyone, except for uh, Gundogan's also left, but he, he's like 34, 35, right? Almost everyone except for uh Holland, who's obviously come in uh, last season, and Ruben Diaz. They're either over 30 or close to 30s, which, you know, it means for footballers, they're either coming down from their peaks or they're at their peaks. And what has been their goal for the past was it, is it six years that Pep Guardiola, Pep, Pep, uh, he's been in charge? The Champions League. And they've gone and done that. So I, I can see why a lot of City players might want to just move on. I mean, just from the sake of motivation side. They've well, look, probably... everybody can move on from City. It's not really about moving on. It's about where he's moved to. And again, he's he's up there in age. There's nothing for him to... For me, is nothing for me to prove. He's won the Premier League player this season with Leicester. I mean, there's a lot of ballers who's never won the, the pr pr player of the season in the Premier League. You know, so that that's a legacy. He came seventh in the Ballon d'Or uh, voting when Leicester won the league. The only thing he's missing is, is the World Cup, which is, he's never going to get with, with Algeria. I get it. I mean, there. I don't know. I think. I mean, to me, he's he's a Premier League legend. The what he did with Leicester. Um, I, I know there's a lot of players around him that helped him, like Kante, Vardy, and such. But I mean, that fairy tale story is enough for me to cement his legacy on, on football. Uh, maybe not football, but Premier League at least. Yeah, that was going to be my question to you was, if he were to retire today, would you consider him a legend or a don like that? You're saying yes. I still don't know yet. Because he, yes, he did have the great season at Leicester. I'm not denying that. And he's done excellent at City. But even you mentioned it, right? He's not getting that playing time consistently. That's why he's falling down the pecking order at City. So you can't really say that he had a big decisive factor in those in that city success, maybe to the likes that Kevin De Bruyne had, for example. But then again, we will go back to him falling off the picking order at City. Who hasn't fallen off the picking order at City? Like let's be real, right. Foden has fallen off. British had his time off. Even Bernardo Silva has had his time off the picking order. Like it's just bound to happen at a club like that with so many incredible players. It's just, that's why even like Gabby Jesus, right? He moved to Arsenal, he saw a whole different Jesus. I think the same could have been for Mares. I know the age difference is there between the two, but had Mares even gone to, even like a Chelsea, they're a team looking to revive. They probably need somebody like that. No. I think he, he could have done well there. He's never played in a Pochettino system. The guys, he's never been a, in a... I mean, at his age, he's not going to be able to play the football that Pochettino wants. But, I mean, either way, I, I just, I feel, I feel worried a little bit for City. Not that I care, really, but their, um, their replacements, I'm looking at, I mean, Kovacic and Gundogan, I, I don't necessarily view them as as like for like. Kovacic can get in, get into the box um, late and, and finish those chances off, but he doesn't have the, the pass, the, the final pass to unlock a defense like, like a Gundogan would. Um, you know, uh, they're talking of uh, Gavardio coming in. We'll, we'll see. There's some some hiccups there. Uh, I guess uh, Leipzig did not want the the news to leak before they sign a replacement. Um, now with Mares gone, I mean, is Bernardo Silva going to be finally uh, be allowed to leave? 
this guy has been unhappy. I don't. I mean, I don't know how you can be unhappy at City, except for the the weather, maybe. But this guy's unhappy at City, but he still puts in a hundred percent and ends up winning a treble. It's just, I it's can't see time, man. Everybody wants game time. Yeah, I mean, it's. I I think, combined with the lack of motivation or, you know, when you have something that you want so badly for so long, and you achieve that. That is something very hard to gather yourself up again and go for a, a different target. Now, you know, I I think you understand what I'm saying, and I and I know a lot of people will, will resonate with that. That's that's a very hard thing to do, and that's why I'm a little bit worried for City, with with that plus all these players leaving, the replacements not maybe up to the standards that they were at. So, I I won't complain, but I I personally don't see City being as strong as last season. And plus, teams will find out how to how to deal with the the system that that Pep has built. Well, I feel like we can make that argument every single year, and we have been saying it. And that's one thing that we've credited Guardiola for is his ability to adapt his squads. I mean, we saw the generation of Sane and Sterling on the wings adapt, and now they've just they've come become a completely different side, and it's worked. We we'll argue the same thing about them playing best with a false nine. And then now a striker has come in. It's going to change their system. But no, he's still able to adapt. So I don't quite share those sentiments about being worried about it. I know you don't want to use the word worry, but you're not too concerned about... I mean, I'm saying I'm not too concerned about City where that's concerned. I can't, I can't understand why you would be based on what we've seen from them Year after year. Well, you think about it from the manager's perspective too. He had not won the the Champions League since uh, was it twenty eleven when when they beat us in the, in the final. He's had to endure, you know. Oh, he can't do it without Messi. He can't do it with without uh, a blank checkbook, which is probably true. But you know, he's a, he's already he's achieved what he's wanted since twenty eleven. That's twelve years, a decade and two years. I think you gotta you gotta give some not not credit but give some thoughts into you know the, the their motivation as a as a squad. I think that's why we're seeing a lot of them being moved on. Really. Speaking of of players moving on though, and another winger to be honest, Harvey Barnes. What you make of his move now from Leicester? Um, just. Just an average. I, I don't rate him at all. He's he's pretty young still. Um, but he I, I just think he's um when it comes to finishing, he's just another Saint Maximan who's going to be moving to again uh, Saudi Arabia. He's his finishing is poor. Uh their style is very different, right? Uh Saint Maximan is tricky, uh very uh dribble heavy, whereas um uh, Harvey Barnes is more direct, you know, pays getting behind. But even getting in behind, he's 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 still raw. He's not like Rashford. Rashford is almost perfect at that, right? Getting in behind. Whereas Barnes gets caught in in the offside trap pretty often. And I think I think he's just an average player. It'll work out for Newcastle because that that's a player that that they need. You know they. I mean, if Saint Maximin has been moved on, that they're gonna need somebody um, to to fill in that spot. Even Saint Maximin wasn't getting the game time. Uh, near or after the World Cup until April, right? Until you know he came in the side and, and did some work. So for the price, um, I mean, thirty is, is average, right? So I mean, it, it's all right. I don't, I don't think Barnes is anything special unless he can he can develop. We'll see. But so far from what I've seen, he's just uh, a, a, an average winger. I think average is. Harsh. I mean, I get what you're saying because I guess the average winger isn't necessarily bad, but I feel he's slightly underrated. I agree with you on his finishing. His finishing definitely needs work, and that I think everybody can agree on that one. But I think he adds a lot of dynamism on the wing. I think he's fast, good pressing, and I think he's quite quite a smart player when he's ready. <laughs> when he's ready. He's not ready yet. He's ready. <laughs> I, I mean, would he start in any of the top six sides? No, 
he wouldn't even probably start not. Aston Villa. I mean, probably not. But I mean, is that the deciding factor to whether you're good or not? I mean, that that's why I say average in a in a way where, you know, I'm not looking at this Harvey Barnes signing as damn they've got a gem. Not not really. I mean, homegrown, nice a winger, tricky fast winger, um, uh, nice young too. Okay, nice, but he's just an average player so far. Yeah, I mean, I agree. He's not a gem, but I think he'll be effective. He kind of reminds me of Craig Bellamy a little bit. I mean, kind of random, but he they, does they've, kinda random. they've they've both got wicked shots, but I think, I think that's an insult to Bellamy. Bellamy Serious? was yeah, Bellamy was a much composed player on the ball. They both... I like Craig Bellamy a lot still. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. I, I, it's hard for me to like him. He played for Liverpool and City, but he was a. Uh, now he's an above average player, I would say. I'm not a legend or anything like that, but he's an above average player. Harvey Barnes. He, he said he played for Liverpool and City. The man has played for like fifty teams. Bro. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I, at best, Harvey Barnes could be that. I, I don't see him being any better than that, really. Yeah, I I, I think that's a that's a fair take to be honest. But speaking of your side, since we just spoke about some sides that. You hate. Oh, oh nana. nana. What's my name? Oh, Nana. <laughs> so you were singing one song. I was singing. Wait, what were you singing? Song. What were you singing? I was singing um, Jaja by, what's, what's her name? Nakamura. You don't know? Oh, Jaja. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. But this, I'm pretty sure this guy's the first keeper of color to play for us and i don't i don't mean that any with any shade like it's i don't i'm pretty sure it's always been no no tim howard i mean did he really play for us <laughs> i mean he did he did okay i guess yeah okay but yeah i mean i'm 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 excited i i saw him really mainly uh I, i'm sure most people have in the final, in the Champions League final, I saw this guy pushing up to the midfield. I was like, what? I mean, even Ederson doesn't do that, you know? And there's a reason why Pep Guardiola picked the keeper as the problem for Inter. That's how crucial he was to, to their build-up play from, uh, for, for Inter. The only thing that worries... I mean, worry again, worry is a strong word, but the only thing that I'm skeptical of is uh, again, I've I've only seen clips of him. He tends to go with with both of his hands a lot when sa- when trying to save, whereas with with David de Gea, you would see him stretching out with either his leg or just you know he's he he's got long arms. You know he reaches out with with one arm and he's got enough strength in, in his wrist to push it to parry it away from danger. Unlike unlike Loris, who oftentimes pushes it into danger. Um. That's the only thing that I'm skeptical of. Uh, it's it's gonna be very weird not seeing David De Gea in goal, uh, and and a keeper not wearing number one. But uh, speaking of Ederson, you know, six years ago we were like, I mean, ha, huh, why why are they spending thirty million pounds on on a keeper from from Benfica? You know, a Brazilian keeper, albeit City had issues with with Bravo, and they even tried a Caballero, right? But the impact was was there for everyone to see. And it's still there for everyone to see. I think, now I'm not saying we're going to go win the league, but I think the impact that Onana would have on, on this United side would probably be as great, if not greater, than the impact Ederson had on City when he first came in in, in 2017. That's a very big statement. And the reason being is because, I mean, you did talk about his his amazing qualities with his feet and why that's so important to the build-up, which I can see why that would be very beneficial, especially for your side with Lissandro in the side, with Luke Shaw, who are good ball-playing defenders. It can it can help the flow to push everybody up the field. But then you mentioned the other point about his shot-stopping. And in my opinion, shot-stopping is the first and foremost for a keeper, right? Keepers are keepers for that reason. They're in the goal to save shots. Just like what we say about the fullbacks. When the fullbacks 
the fullback role first became a somewhat attacking role, people had to kind of backtrack a bit and say, you know what, the first first role and job of a fullback is to defend. And I think the same applies to the keepers. If you have a keeper who's so good at playing from the back, who's so good with his feet, but can't save the ball, what's the what's the point? He, he can save. It's not like he can't save a ball. You know, did I, I, I say worried because I've seen the hair make some crazy saves with with you know and pairing it away from danger. That that's my key point. He can make saves. The the, the problem is he can he can sometimes push it into danger. And I, I don't like that. That's the that's the one biggest thing I didn't like about Loris, other than his mistakes. He very much oftentimes pushes the ball into the danger zone. For if you see a lot of the goals that Tottenham conceded over the past what 10 years that he's been there. A lot of them are from Loris parrying the ball away straight into the attack, rushing in. So I'm not I don't think there's any denial. I mean, he's got great athleticism, as you would expect, from uh from, from the clips that I've seen. The only thing is uh, I'll say one of the two things is that you know, put, put being able to be, being strong enough to make saves and push it away uh from danger. And plus, um uh, not at Ajax, but at Inter, he played. I mean, Inter weren't the team with the highest line, you know. So, some question marks over his sweeping ability, perhaps, maybe. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, the manager seen him for what three years? I think it was at Ajax, and I'm sure he knows him better than I do. Um, so we'll we'll see how he gets on. But I'm um I I am excited. Uh, it's um he. <laughs> He he reminds me of Bartes like it does for a lot of people. Bartes was was crazy, you know. So a bit of craziness never never hurt nobody. As long as that doesn't cost us goals, I'm I'm all for it. Well, hey, I mean the Ajax signings have so far been pretty looking pretty good, right? The Sandro you, Martinez, you putting Timber in that, or Timber, yeah, I'm putting Timber in there <laughs> after Sandro, one game, Tim, after one Timba, pre preseason but, game, and then also Anto. Oh wait, never mind. I mean, you rate him, so I don't know why you're not putting him in there, bro. <laughs> no, I mean, I rate him, but it hasn't it hasn't proven successful yet. <laughs> He's proven me wrong at the moment, so I mean, I can't I can't even defend him at this point. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Uh, also, another thing you mentioned, Lissandro and, and Luke Shaw, our, our left side is stacked. Our right side, not so much. I think that's part of the reason why Anthony struggles. So, uh, that's a good point. The the team needs to be a bit more balanced still. That's a very good point. Earlier, you did speak about Guardiola's, I guess, I don't want to say praise, but caution and concern towards Onana. And now, he's gone ahead and he has interest in a centre-back from Leipzig by the name of Guardiola. Not Guardiola, but Guardiola. What do you make of this centre-back? I mean, he had a great World Cup. He's young. He's left-footed and... Which is the biggest thing to, for Pep, yeah. Yeah, and another big thing for Pep is he seems to be an immaculate ball-playing centre-back. Yeah, the biggest thing is he can he can pass and carry the ball up the field. Some of the players can't do both. You know, some players can only pass the ball or only carry the ball upfield. Yeah, I mean, this guy is a real prospect. And this confirms to me that I mean, Pep went crazy with with five center, sometimes five center backs, and I mean, he oftentimes started with four, right? Stones uh, drop it into midfield. This only tells me that that's going to continue. They're selling Kyle Walker, bringing in Gavardio. Uh, they're in talks with Benjamin Pavard, although that's still not to be confirmed. You know, the a guy who can play right back and center back who may prefers to play center back. So yeah, I think we're going to see that system. For a while now, again under under Pep for City. Yeah, system wise, I think it's clear. As far as personnel, looking at Guardiola as a or however you want to pronounce it, looking at Guardiola as a player, an individual player. Are we looking at Laporte enhanced? Uh, hundred hundred percent. I mean, Laporte is is gonna leave probably. Uh, I'm who signs him? I don't know. Um, but yeah, this guy's a physical specimen. He he's big, he's tall, but he's also fast. You know, we'll touch on another defender that that's that's that that's a physical specimen. But 
the guy can do everything. And he's still only 22, I believe. So What's the price tag on him again? I think it was close to around even 90 or something. Well, it was reported uh, 86 million pounds, but Leipzig did not want them to leak before they sign a replacement. Now it looks like they're going to ask for more from City so that, you know, when, when teams know you've got 86 million pounds coming in, they're, they're going to try to rip you off more. Same thing happening to West Ham right now. Um, so, well, I mean, we'll see. The deal will probably go through. Uh, the price tag, let's see. Yeah, and speaking of centre-backs as well, let's talk about one from your country. Kim, he has signed to Bayern Munich. What do you make of that signing? This one hurts a little bit. A month ago, when, when the uh, summer transfer window just started, I was convinced that he was going to come to to United because he had learned English uh, and he's always adored the Premier League. Uh, he said in interviews, he's always adored the Premier League and <clears throat> specifically United because of a certain player that, that's played there in the past. But Your favorite player. Yeah, <clears throat> the, the reason why I support my United. But, I mean, I guess when Bayern Munich come in, it's um, it, it is a big pull. I mean, Bayern Munich are pretty much guaranteed to win the win the Bundesliga. They're always going to be in the Champions League, whereas there's obviously more doubts concerning uh, United. So, I can understand his decision. Uh, it's it hurts. It's it sucks. I wanted to see him in our red, not Bayern Munich's red. But, I mean, best of wishes to him. He's um for I mean he's not obviously he doesn't play in the Premier League, but whoever. For people who have not watched him play last season, he was the he was a top five center back in, in the in the world last year. He won the best defender award for Serie A. And I mean, we know Italian leagues are, are known for, for defenders, so that tells you something. The biggest thing for him is again, like I mentioned with Cavardio, a physical specimen. He's tall, but he's fast. He's wicked fast. He can cover all sorts of areas, which is why it makes it perfect for him to play. For a for a top side in the league, now Jose Mourinho mentioned this. Tottenham could have signed him for I think less than ten million pounds, but Tottenham didn't want to go to that level because at the time he was playing in China. You know, China. He uh, he he went there. I think it was after the government regulations and the, all the stars were trying to leave. At the time, it may it it did not make sense because. Everyone knew him as as a special talent, and for him to go to, I mean, he was link, being linked with Watford as well. Watford were in, the, were in the Premier League at that time. For him to reject Watford and then to go to China, it raised eyebrows, and a lot of people were criticizing him. But two years later, he went to the Turkish league, played with Fenerbahce, where, you know, we we talk a lot about three at the back, four at the back. No, Fenerbahce was one at the back. This guy was the only center back playing. For, for Fenerbahce and I don't mean it like literally but all the other defenders are so bad and he just stood out so much which is why he made the move to Napoli and I mean the rest is history so yeah I mean this guy is a beast the only thing I'll say about him uh, right now I mean we, we say things about Thiago Silva right he's always at right place at the right time he doesn't need to you know run around like a headless chicken uh, sometimes he can run around like a headless chicken. I'm not saying that's bad because he can cover all sorts of areas, but that, you know, you, you would ideally not want to go around and be everywhere as a center back. You know, the more you can conserve your energy, the more concentrated you can be in, in critical moments. So if that's something that he can develop, he can, you know, play at the top level well into his, his late thirties, like just like how Thiago Silva is playing. Yeah, and I, I think that's amazing. I think that says a lot about just Korean football in general, the development of it, the new players are arriving as well. And I think that's just that's that's brilliant. That's honestly brilliant. I do I do want to make make a note then about players diverting from Man United, as we've seen with Kim. But Jesse Lingard, Jesse Lingard has started his own football club called J Ling's FC. What is this guy doing? You you trying out for that club or not? <laughs> I mean, I'll probably make it. 
<laughs> Even with my retired ass, I probably still make that shit. But what yeah. you make? What you make of this move? He's decided. All right, nobody wants me. I'ma just create something for myself so I can join it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, team. like this is just his brand, him building his brand. What do you think this is? Is this an attention stunt? No, I mean, the thing is with him, ever since he, he rose to some sort of fame under Mourinho, he started almost acting like a, a pop star, you know, launching his brand. You know, this, I don't even know how to do this stupid uh logo i think it, it is it's this one right it's like jl it, you, your your thumb and your pinky combined it makes it a, it makes it look like a jl i mean you you're a footballer you know it, I, I don't think he was ever uber talented um but i did not expect him to to take this kind of trajectory in his career although some not helped obviously you know he was rotten on the bench for a good amount of time but i mean you're a footballer what are you doing? Okay, footballer is a stretch for him, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, just... <laughs> but, but I mean, for real, like, I'm just a bit confused. I don't think we've ever really seen this kind of move happen. And especially for, for a player like Jesse Lingard, who has went really to the World Cup five that... years ago. That what? Who went to the World Cup five, just five years ago. Yeah, but... Still, I just it's not to me, it's about the fact that he's done this and he hasn't really gained that kind of respect to be able to do something like this. Like a David Beckham went goes ahead and buys buys into Miami. I mean, Beckham has this kind of respect in football, he's a legend. Whereas Jesse Lingard, I don't know. I don't feel like okay, I get starting your brand and stuff like that. You're you're you're, you're you kind of have this opportunity as a footballer to be able to have your name out there and have that reputation to be able to blow that brand up. But to start an entire football club, bro, like you've already shown you're not good enough. Just accept it. That's the way, that's the way I'm seeing it, right? Unless there's some other reason this is his way, this is his strategy to build out his brand, then maybe there is something behind the scenes. But from me looking on it just like this, from this perspective, I can't explain it. And it just doesn't make sense for the reputation that he currently has in the football world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we should we should have seen this coming when he decided to join Nottingham Forest over West Ham last summer. You know, West Ham he was almost guaranteed to I mean he know he knew the manager, he knew the team. And he was almost guaranteed to be a starter. Goes to Nottingham Forest where he got very much well paid. Uh, very much more compared to West Ham, what West Ham would have offered him. I mean, it, it's his it's his career, but I think we really should have seen this coming probably from the way he's he's made his decision so far. Yeah, I mean, just something completely out of left field. <laughs> but what would be hilarious is if in like 15 years, 20 years, even like 50 years, we look back and like Jaylings FC is in the Premier League or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. That that's that is never happening. Hey, bro, don't say never. You know, it, you never know. Suppose there's a big investment. Some Saudi Arabian person comes and wants to buy Jaylings FC. You never know, bro. Well, investments don't often lead to results in in the down the pyramid in, in English leagues. You know, Salford, Salford are the, the most, the richest club, or was until Wrexham joined. Still stuck in the, in the League 2, I believe, uh, playing the same league as Wrexham. Yeah, you're right. Investment doesn't necessarily mean result. You're right, but... Even in the Premier League, yeah, even in the Premier League. But more so down, down the pyramid. The whole thing is just trippy to me. You let us know what you think. Jaylings FC... Is there hope? <laughs> and let us know if you're gonna go to the, for the trial, and let us know if you make it, because I'm not, I'm not making it. I, I, I hey, I, I... no, no, sell yourself short. You might. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But, uh, well, I guess on, on the last topic, your your favorite topic it would be Spurs. They played West Ham. New look Spurs, you might say. 
Uh, they played against West Ham third team, maybe. Uh, it was, I mean, they lost Declan Rice and they didn't bring a lot of the first team players. But, and they lost 2-3. They lost by a goal. But, I will say promising signs for Tottenham because they dominated West Ham. And we'll have to see if, if this can work in, in the actual Premier League level or even, you know, the European competitions. But, they dominated them. And I don't want to... I'm just looking at your face. And and I say this because we, we can't draw too much conclusions about preseason, right? You know, Jesse Lingard was was balling in, in the preseason under Louis van Gaal. But I think what you can deduct or deduce from, from preseason is who's not going to make it. You know, I think... I think we're seeing that with the centre-backs at Tottenham. They need a centre-back. Or two. And I'm glad that we're playing them early in the season because when they're still trying to figure out all these th- these things, you know, playing high line, you know, keep, keeping track of runners, there's bound to be mistakes in the first few games of the season. So I'm glad we're playing them early on in the season and possibly when Harry Kane is not going to be in his top form. If you are regular with us, you would have known that this man said last year that Tottenham... No, no, no. All right, that's... um. The league <laughs> and if you know this man at all he says this every that's all we have time for today guys thanks for tuning in as always we hope you enjoyed your time with us remember to subscribe to leave comments and share with your friends follow us on social media at FOTB pod don't forget to leave a review rating and most importantly don't forget to turn on those notifications Join us again next time as we discuss the highly anticipated upcoming Premier League action. Thanks again as always. See you then.